the Procurement and Finance Coffee Break and today we have a guest, we have Andy Philbrick and Andy is a seasoned IT professional and head of IT at a London headquartered insurance company and today we're going to be talking about the importance of managing change and people, uh, specifically with IT transformation involved. So. Andy will share his reflections on the do's and don'ts of managing change and draw on his rich experience in the field. So welcome Andy, great pleasure yeah. to have you here Hello. today. Yeah, yeah, very, uh, very happy to be here. I'm <laughs> okay. Richard. Our first live one. I feel like we've got the now. It's yeah, a nice yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the questions are answered. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Richard, uh, why don't you? I'm going to kick off. Yes. Right. You, we we have talked no end about change management. We talk about it left, right, centre, and you've got a really rich experience of uh, acquisition, divestment. Uh, ERP change, SAP change. I mean, if you look back at all of that, what, what, what are your reflections on what change management really means when you're trying to make it happen? Well, I think it comes down to um, having a successful implementation at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. that, that's what the, the change management is. How do you uh, get that change done, adopted, and up and running within your organisation? And I think um, one of the things you need to look at is when you're looking at the, the time frame of the project, um, very often it's focused on, well, it's going to take us this long to you know, implement this bit, bit of technology or th this change of process, whatever it happens to be. Um, but we don't top and tail that. Right. And, and doing the assessment about what the actual impact of that change is going to be on mm -hmm. the organisation and how do we get make sure that adoption at the tail end is, is correct right. and doing that work up front because mm -hmm. you, you, you're going to have to pay for it at some point mm -hmm. and I think it's mm -hmm. best that you do it up front and then you're aware of what's going down the pipe. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you think about sort of the the you know what makes it go well I mean what what's your view on sort of you know team wider stakeholder engagement all of that kind of piece in rather than just the pure planning of how it happens yeah you've got to get the the whole organization on side with this right. this change you know from top to bottom because in, unless you've got the the senior management back in you're not going to be able to implement a lot of this stuff at the at the operational level because people will be saying well I'm about to hear with stuff as it is, you know, go away. Right, mm. which is what we talked about, about yes, dedicating yes, resource yeah. to, yeah, yeah, to doing yeah, stuff, yeah? Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. Okay. So, yeah. so, so um, I, I know you've, you've uh, worked on a large SAP implementation and also worked on acquisitions and carve-outs. Um, what are some of your key learnings from situations where change management and the people element of a transformation project, be it an acquisition or divestment yeah. or, or an actual transformation program, <coughs> didn't receive the necessary attention initially. Um, what, 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 uh, what lessons did you learn and, and what do you think you, you observed in those situations? Yeah, so the, just getting back to that point about um, you know, the, the BAU and protecting mm. that, because um, you've got to make sure that your, your business can operate mm. as it is whilst you're bringing in potentially a very right. big change. Mm. Um, and it's all about, you know, it, it comes down to the, the, the classic elements of people processing technology. So mm. if, you're, if your transformation has got a technology element to it, very often people focus on that bit and mm. forget about the others. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the, the technology is typically a, an enabler, so you've got to get your, your process right. Mm. What, what's your actual process? And then how do the people fit into that? Mm. Right. Mm. And if you if you haven't got um, that idea, that, that assessment done of how, uh, you know, what's the culture of your organization and how people are likely to react to change, mm. right? and how do you bring them along, mm. With this change, if if you if you forget about that or you underestimate the effort that's uh, going to be needed on that, yeah. you're, you're going to pay for it at the back end. Yeah, you know, the, yeah. 
the system or whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. the transformation isn't going to get the adoption that you hoped for. Yeah. And therefore, you're not going to get yeah. the, the benefits yeah. as, uh, as early and, as you hoped. And I suppose if, if it's the case that you've got a company with people who um, perhaps been in the same job a long time or a little bit resistance to change and you haven't got sort of change champions to yeah. sort of drive, drive the change, make people understand the benefits of change, make sure they're attending and listening to the training and not mm. just attending the training online and doing something else. Um, that, that adoption piece that you talk about, you know, you could have, um, have a shiny new uh, system, but they may still be trying to do everything still manually the way they always did it. Exactly that, yeah. And, it, and there's there's many ways to, to solve that, but I, I think you need to look at it and uh, get your plan mm. uh, set up right at the start yeah. about yeah. how you're going to tackle that. You know, it, is it backfilling? Yeah. Uh, you're going to bring in cop transfer, whatever it happens to be, or are you going to use um, you know consultancies to, to yeah. help mm. bridge that gap and yeah. get people to adopt the system and get it yeah. up and running? Well, and I suppose the same goes for change management. I would say about like any kind of transformation project. And I think a couple of coffee breaks ago, we were talking about how seventy percent of transformation projects, mm. um, the yeah. McKinsey report said, failed <coughs> to meet their original objectives. And I think the tr same is true for change management, which is an element of. Uh, sort of um, the program set up for uh, an effective transformation program. If you if you fail to plan, then plan to fail because, <laughs> um, as you say, it, you may not fail completely, but um, it will cost you later down the line, and it'll probably cost you you know a trifecta of three as opposed to the one pound spent up front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's getting that put into that business case right at the start. You mm. know, so you think, well, this. Let's say it's a, a technology uh, uh, implementation you're doing is the major part of the the, uh, the spend, so the focus is it, is on that, and it's going to take us you know like another twelve months to do that, but then you've got to factor in well no, mm. hang on there's there's an there's adoption piece because we're making a fundamental change to the way people are going to be working. Mm. Yeah. Let's say so you know you you, you need to recognise that and mm. recognise what uh, what your culture is there. Yeah. You know how how do people typically react to change? How long have they been doing something a particular yeah. way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that type of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get get that up front. Yeah. So, you know, no, no one's got any nasty surprises about well. Okay, that's that's twelve months to do that, uh, get that implemented. But then we've got you know, pretend I don't know what is it, six months of mm. um, you know, hyper care, whatever you want to call yeah. it, mm. uh, to get that really well, adopted and yeah. embedded into the uh, organisation. I think. I think. So I think, you know, you did. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the execs aren't then gonna say, oh, yeah. God, you, you know, you've gone over budget, you've yeah. gone over time. I think and where I think that work better is where um, the plan has been to have, a say, I was going to say change champions, but if we talk about IT like super users embedded in the business who are working with the teams doing the work, because if it's, if it's too much of a top-down change management mm. of these are the benefits mm. and you just do presentations without yeah. that sort of um, operational embedded element, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. then as I say, I feel like the danger can be that people just zone out from the presentations and the training a little bit. Yeah, yeah I think that's a very good point because <laughs> you, you want people to be um, you know, pulling this in rather than you pushing it on them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so if, if they're doing that, then it's going to make life a lot easier for everybody. Yeah. So if, if they can see the benefit of this this uh, transformation, this change, yeah. you know, what to, to them in their daily lives, yeah. you know, because you can do mm. a presentation and say, well, it's going to save this or mm. whatever. And I think, well, what, what does that mean to me? You know, mm. I'm, I'm at the coal face trying to hack yeah, this coal yeah. out, you know, and you, what yeah. are you doing for me? Right. Yeah. I, I, Change gear a bit, and I am not going to ask you to reveal all the things that have gone wrong in all the projects that you've done in the past. But I, I nothing, nothing, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. It's always something else. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I, I do want to zoom in on one thing, right? And we we've touched on this, which is that you know when when anyone's doing any kind of transformation in any area, the importance of well, two things: one, actually dedicating a team to doing it, but also the reality that at the same time as you're transforming, you've still got to, the, the company's still got to operate. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're doing an environmental process or you're doing a change of production line. Mm -hmm. If you're a car manufacturer, you can't just 
not make cars while you change your production line. So yeah. if you look back on the, you know, the projects that you worked on, what would you say are the really important things to make sure that that ability to continue business as usual delivery at the same time as bringing something new? What, 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 it, what have been your key takeaways about making that work? Yeah, well, first of all, you, you, you've got to recognise that and you, you've got to make a decision about um, does BAU take priority? Right. And nine times out of ten, absolutely yes, it, 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 yeah. it does because the business has got to carry on operating. And then you've got to make a decision about, okay, so I'm, I'm bringing in this project. Um, I don't have to do it. Mm. Let's say it's, it's been done for, uh, you know, to expand the business or whatever, but it's not regulatory or anything like no, that. So okay, you're right. It's discretionary. So you've got to make a decision about, well, how, how do you prioritise that against the, the, the BAU? Mm. Um, you know, if there's a, a, a pull on a particular set of resources to, towards BAU, do you accept that you're going to uh, extend the, the project because of that, mm -hmm. or you're going to be more proactive and bring do something about it and bring in you know additional resource and how do you actually do that? Mm -hmm. uh, because one of the challenges is, of course, um, particularly if you've got a, a small organisation, um, you probably haven't got uh, strength and depth right. and spare capacity there. Mm -hmm. So if you're asking some, you know, someone's working at. 100% uh, as it is, and then you're bringing in some additional work on a project, how are they going to yeah, cope with that? Some, right. some, some, that, some that's going to yeah. give. So you've got to get that uh, assessment done up front and then lay out mm. your plan about mm. what you're going to do. You know, like mm. I was saying before, you know, you, you're going to backfill it and bring in a uh, resource. Yeah. Or are you going to uh, think, well, I can bring in uh, partners that are going to help with this because they know the, the, the yep. process. Yep. Mm. Um, and I think that's yeah. so that other point about yeah. process is so important as well because uh, you've got to take away the, the nuances. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you, if you can get something laid there as the, well, what are the actual most important aspects of this process that I'm doing right. here? Mm. And focusing on on that, yeah. And then you know it's it's uh, probably twenty percent, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. fluff, for want of a better yeah. word. And you, yeah, yeah. you know, you don't have to worry about that so, so I, much. And if you do that, you know, think yeah. you, you'll get a bit of clarity there, and you think, well, actually, a, a lot of the stuff we're we're worrying about, we we don't need to worry about. But it's it's, it's yeah. getting that uh, you know what what was the critical part of that mm. process. I think um, another observation I have um, on that point you made about backfilling. Um, so, you know, let's say you decide you're going to backfill your staff. A, you've got to, uh, you know, if you've got a, a, a program timeline, you've got to factor in the, the lead time to recruit, the, the lead time to train that backfill staff before you actually need mm -hmm. your your BAU staff. Yeah. And then the other thing that I've observed is that let's say you get one person to backfill the, the SME who is going to be on the programme. Don't assume that because you put one person in that will lead to that SME being 100% available mm. because even <coughs> if they've been recruited, been trained up, there will naturally will be uh, judgment points where the organisation will still want to talk to the SME. So if you get one person backfilling, then maybe assume um, that they can do the job maybe 80% of the time, and therefore mm -hmm. the other person can be 80% on the project, but yeah, you can't yeah. just consider it a, like a one-for-one. One. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I've got a, a final question, and it, I'm, just, I'm just thinking about it. it, it in, in line of your previous answer, this, this thing about deciding the relative priority between mm. you know BAU and a project and we again we've talked about executive sponsorship and executive ownership of a change program because mm. all too often you see in big companies it's delegated to some you know second tier executive who runs it has the detail and the board isn't actually that engaged mm. in your experience what are the consequences of not having proper executive ownership of that of that change program and the relative priority. I mean, what what have you observed? Well, well, I, I think it can uh, lead to a, a conflict in priorities uh, right. because you know you could be at, uh, the the execs could be pushing against uh, something else, right. which you know the people further on down the, 
aren't aware of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, there's there's a focus this way, and you and the poor so and so who's been tasked with getting this done yeah. is over here going going this way, and but the execs have got the resources allocated somewhere else. And I know you said so, everything has gone perfectly, but have <laughs> yeah. you ever seen that happen? <laughs> uh, I've not seen it uh, happen in the extreme, but because uh, I, I think the happening the the extreme is rare. Yeah. But the 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 problem is um, even if you've got a certain element of that, it can lead to problems. Right. Yeah. Because it it's uh, it's going to lead to stress and uh, 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 extended timelines for uh, for what you're doing. And I know, I know we're nearly out of time, but I'm going to sneak in one more question for Claire Clancy. If you, if you, to our thousands of listeners, obviously, if there was, based on all your experience in the programme you've done, if there was one thing that you were going to recommend to someone who was about to embark on their first ever transformation, what would that one piece of advice be? I think to understand the culture of your organisation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, how, how are they going to react to this uh, this change? And when I say culture, you know, the, the the people and everything mm. else about the uh, the organisation, because it, uh, unless you understand that, you you don't really know uh, how things are going to go. Mm. Yeah, because you, you could yeah. you can lay it out, you know, and then you know yeah. consultancies can come in and say, right, this is it's yeah. going to it's going to go like this. Yeah, um, and you think. Mm. Well, yeah. I'm not so sure. <laughs> Confirmation that we're going to be doing a coffee break on culture. Yeah, yeah. that has come up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. great, yeah. great answer, Andy, and thanks for your time today. Yeah. So, so we've heard basically, you know, invest early in change management, understand your culture, focus focus on the impact of people, and um, and make sure you've got exec, executive sponsorship, and that you're all pulling in the right. The right direction with a sense of priority yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 there we go oh, what a pleasure yes wow pleasure. our first live <laughs> interview on yeah. a coffee break yeah there we go. excellent yeah. and well, we have some more coming up actually don't yeah, we, we? Do. we do so everyone uh until next time bye-bye bye-bye take care bye-bye.